Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast, is brought to you by the Friends in Recovery Community, a thriving network of individuals who are fighting back against the stigma of addiction. Join our hosts as they speak up about the real issues of addiction, treatment, and recovery. Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast, is available on Facebook, Podbean, iTunes, and YouTube 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Now, here are your friends in recovery. Welcome, everybody, to the Friends in Recovery podcast with Jersey Ed. I'm your host. Hold on, hold on. You're out there, host. Listen, this is how we used to do it. Hey, everybody, (laughs) welcome to Friends in Recovery podcast. I am the podfather, Mike Miles, along with my co-host. Jersey Ed. There you go. Now, that's the way we used to do it. That's right. And we're along also with, gag ladies, Miles, introduce yourself. And Super Beth. All right. Welcome to the right. show, everybody. Podfather. Welcome, everybody. Uh, we'll uh, we'll go a little bit more into the Podfather, but if you guys watch the show any any length of time, that was the opening, guys, right there. That's the man. That's the man who started it all. Um, I like to uh, thank everybody for um, coming on here. Welcome everybody in uh, in Facebook Live. And um, how's everybody doing today? Everybody's good. So doing ready great. for this weekend. So ready. So ready for another long weekend, right? Yeah, I know. But it's, yeah, exactly. Exactly. So, but, uh, but, you know, we're, we're, we're kind of uh, winding down. Well, no, we're not winding down. This is the new year, ladies and, and, and Podfather, the new year. We, we, I can't even remember. I can't, I can't even, I can't believe I forgot this, that we just completed a full year of steps, full year. I didn't think we were going to get through it. Yeah. Full year of all the steps. Now we're taking a different twist. Bambi's been getting us some good guests. And today she's got us an amazing guest. But before I introduce the pod father and figure out what's going on, I'd just like to um, have throw the hotline out there. It's 800-989-6504. That's 800-989-6504. Or you can email us at help at friendsandrecoverypodcast.com. Website's friends and recovery community um dot org and podfather we have all our own email addresses now that's how far we've come with this show <laughs> we're so techy <laughs> that's right do you want me to give out the email addresses podfather sure. all right sure. so to get a hold of buckeye bambi you want to you want to um uh you want to email her at buckeye bambi 22 at gmail.com we got Super Beth at superbeth22 gmail.com. And of course, Jersey Ed is Jersey Ed 2018 at gmail.com. Please drop us a note if you want to do get a hold of us. Uh, if you want to ind- individually, um, that's uh kind of how we do. I see Jordan is putting up the hearts already. I don't see a blue heart. Um, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> oh my god, on, I got an orange chart. You got a heart. You got a heart. Podfather, we're doing some heart, heart contests here. Um, I heard that. Yeah. Who's getting the most hearts? So Bambi, Bambi. got most of the hearts, like millions, like billions, <laughs> I think, maybe. Uh, millions. <laughs> so Bambi is a purple heart, right, Bambi? Right. Beth is a <coughs> orange right. heart, and yep. I am a blue heart. So what the contest is every week we're trying to get – in the comments below, if you guys comment on the comments below here on Facebook, give us all all, all the hearts, support whatever right. person you like. So, and if you want to support Mike, Podfather, what color heart do you want, Podfather, for this week? I'll take a red heart. A red heart, a red heart for Podfather. If you want to support That's Podfather, right. so let's uh, let's see those red hearts for. Uh... Sounded like red hot. <laughs> red hot. <laughs> he is red I hot. Like so. um, give me my email too. Gag, get the gag. Give us the email, Podfather. So it's M- Mike Miles, M I L E S, M as in Mike, S as in Sam, W as in whiskey. So it's Mike Miles, M S W at gmail.com. And if you want to give, uh, if you want to give Mike a shout out or give him an email, there it is. And yep. Jordan's gave Jordan, my cousin, gave you two, four, six, seven red hearts, Podfather. So you're way hearts. ahead of me and Beth already. It's- so. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, I'd like to, uh, thank all our donors who makes this show possible to make a donation. Podfather was one of them who made a donation, a nice sizable one. Thank you, Podfather, Very um, well. to Venmo us at, 
uh, Friends in Recovery Enterprises under business, Cash App Friends um, at dollar sign Friends in Recovery, or you can send the old check to Friends in Recovery Enterprises, P.O. Box 1551, Johns Island, South Carolina. Um, and what else do we have here? And Fire uh, Friends in Recovery is part of the Fire Network. Go to our website, Friends in Recovery community.org and you'll see what's going on there as far as the fire network this week's topic this week's guest is the pod father mike miles returns guys the pod father returns and we're going to interview mike he has a lot going on he hasn't been on the show in a while and uh we got a lot of things uh to talk to talk to mike about and some amazing recovery so stay tuned um this is the part we, we do to sober shout outs guys um i know the pod father had a sober shout out and mike you want to lead us off with the sober shout outs Sure. My shout out to little, um, little sad, um, young man, Jesse Savard, um, passed away Christmas Eve as a result of, uh, the horrific addiction that's mm-hmm. been out here this generation. They've been saddled with this addiction for the last, uh, 15 years and it's really heartbreaking. Um, so anyway, Jesse Savard, um, has passed away. Um, uh, his service was today, his dad, Tim Savard, it's a good friend of mine. He's also in recovery um, for many years, and I believe he's a KDAC certified alcohol drug counselor. And um, he's living what most parents would call their worst um, mm. nightmare, losing a child. And just remember, you know, um, young young Jesse Savard. He was only 34 and you're saying prayers, uh, same one for the Savat family. Thank yes, you. Yes, absolutely. Thanks, Podfather. And we'll we'll make sure to keep uh, Jesse and his family in our prayers. Bambi, I know you had a shout out, right? Yeah, mine's a little happier. Um, mine is um, to um, Jimmy H. And he has got one year sober oh. on January 1st, was one year sober. And um, Jimmy and I were in rehab together. Yes. And discharged on the same day. So we were, wow. you know, we got pretty close and um, we were both there about the same, you know, admitted the same time, discharged same time. And we were both so bitchy at first. <laughs> I, I, I'm surprised people ever warmed up to us, but. Um... <laughs> <laughs> so congratulations, Jimmy H. And yes. uh, he's a, he's a dear friend of mine too. So congratulations on your one year, Jim. It just, just passed by here. Um, Beth, anything, anything you nope. think of? No, nope. I'm hibernating no. till the, till January. Beth is hibernating. <laughs> That's her. Um, that was the question of the week was, last week. Yeah. And she's that was her, 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 um, what yeah. she wanted to learn to do. That's right. That's what she's learning. She's putting it to use. <laughs> Beth, you have to stand up and show us your shirt. Okay. <laughs> you made the mistake of, of showing it to us. You don't think I was going to let that go. I, I didn't think you'd remember today. <laughs> that is got a little bad. knife on there. <laughs> There you go. That's the mood Beth is in, guys. So drop her an email, get her some hearts. Let's make her feel better, guys. I want to see uh, orange hearts big time. So yeah, all the uh, going this week. Um, quick meeting update and social media. Don't forget, it. we have twice daily AA meetings on Zoom. You can find them all at our website at friendsandrecoverycommunity.org or on AA's aa-intergroup.org um we're we're on those on on both of those websites and um, look for us on our social media facebook instagram telegram um friends and recoveries adventures and the communities and all that here's the most important part guys don't don't forget to like subscribe and share um give us comments and give us a five star review that is important because it's going to make this show get out there and people are going to see the podfather more and and then he's going to become famous and he's going to take us out to dinner one night and <laughs> we're going to be good so <laughs> I think he's already famous he has like groupies and stuff He does podfather does have groupies so so but uh yeah just make sure we um we uh we kind of do all that guys and and those comments below too i need to see those hearts guys i'm gonna go on a limb here bambi and say this before we get to the question of the week next week on this show we're gonna put together a contest right yeah with the, either hearts or comments or whatever and we are going to have, we're going to give away Podfather's Cadillac. No, we're not going to give away the Podfather's Cadillac. <laughs> that's going to that's gonna go into 
<laughs> that's going to go into the friends and recovery uh, museum once we get that going. Yeah. So, <laughs> but anyways, so, uh, so look for that next week. We'll, we'll, we'll have that all together next week and it'll be a lot of fun. So guys, you know what time it is. Question, Question of the week. Question of the week. There you go, the best, Bambi. The best part of the show. <laughs> The best Fireworks part of the show, the that's show. right. There it is. It all went off. Question of the week, 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 week. So anyways, um, so the question of the week is, and, and it was it was kind of a warm, kind of cold, kind of hot. It was a little bit of everything. Uh, I got, and I'm not going to say who super hated this question, <laughs> but... <laughs> <laughs> but uh, I'm just going to leave it for you guys to imagine. All right. <laughs> so the question of the week is what is the worst TV advertisement you've seen recently? So I'm going to start with Bambi because there's a reason why. All right. And and then I'm going to go to the pod father next because there's a lot of good, a lot of good things going on there. But Bambi, what's the worst TV sh- advertisement you've seen re- recently or whenever? Well, this was hands down. And I don't think I'm the only one because I think this is like a worldwide, we need to have a worldwide coup against this product because (laughs) I almost got it for Christmas because the advertisements were so horrible that my brother thought it would be a great gag gift. But Lumi, Lumi, Lumi deodorant and body deodorant. And there's this part in the commercial, which this is probably going to be too much, but it says... (laughs) You can have a a crotch odor of this much after 15 (laughs) hours, but with Lumi, it's only one or two. I wonder who that person is that's writing it. (laughs) What kind of a job is that? You know, y'all, I just can't get over it. And there, it's everywhere. It's on Facebook, Instagram, every TV show channel it's crazy <laughs> it is that is a pretty nuts commercial um it, it, it's 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 one of the up there on my list but podfather i'm gonna have you go in next sure. there's a reason why what's yours well when when ed told me that that was the question of the week um my first my first <laughs> thought was Luke because it also makes me crazy. He said geez bambi said the same thing well here's the thing i don't know if you've seen all the commercials the OBGYN woman who does, and God bless, I mean, you know what? <laughs> Three sisters, a wife, two daughters, a lovely daughter-in-law, and a granddaughter, two granddaughters. So I'm a woman's guy. I Anything for women. But there's a woman in the commercial sniffing the other woman's butt. <laughs> and, you know, what? There's water, you know? Now, please, if, if, if a shower a day... Yeah, <laughs> Trunk. <laughs> I don't care what kind of creams out there. You need more help than just a little bit of cream. And I don't. Know, I've kind of been looking at it because the, the commercial makes my skin crawl. <laughs> you know, it's it. But one of the girls in the group last night that I I work for on Thursday nights, I had told her this was going to be my topic. You know, for the commercial, and she said, "Well, you would think differently if you ever." Uh, t- took of uh, hot yoga and I thought <laughs> yeah I guess that, you know my youngest daughter does a lot of yoga but I mean in all honesty I'm a I'm a dove guy I'm a clean <laughs> I, I never stink I mean you know what BO was something I just don't remember ever having like, <laughs> at least once a day usually twice I used dove deodorant and uh i'm a guy i'm almost <laughs> I, I don't smell i'm sorry does your crotch so, smell pod father <laughs> right. if your crotch your feet or your boobs stink you know <laughs> and you're in society you got more problems than buying uh this product you know <laughs> you better go see someone go see a good therapist like the pod father <laughs> uh, he'll, he'll get you into showering uh daily <laughs> now i have to make a disclaimer this is not the opinion of friends and yeah. recovery communities uh, this is uh, an each an individual right. uh, uh assessment or 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 opinion so lumi uh, don't don't yell at us so. yeah, lumi lumi lovers don't be haters that's right exactly, <laughs> exactly. And, and boy, there's a lot of lumi lovers out there and i don't know i'd be a little put it this way if somebody sent me a Christmas gift from Lumi. I'd be high. 
<laughs> what's what's the old uh, the old saying? Any good good news, uh, good pr- publicity or bad publicity is still any good publicity yeah. is good publicity. Yeah, exactly, yeah. exactly. But well, I please, love the, I, I love the PYN. <laughs> all she does a great job and i hope she's making a killing here but it's just <laughs> the idea of the product and when i ever seen one of the girls sniffing the other one's butt i'm like come on <laughs> no no nope. uh, it's it's a tough one beth please don't say loomy because uh, i can't do it anymore this <laughs> uh disclaimers here so, so i i gotta tell you i have a uh, selective memory and i'm also gen x so i reject everything um <laughs> but like I, I don't know man now i have that that visual stuck in yeah. my head father i um i'm never gonna get that out <laughs> so sorry so sorry no i i can't remember ever seeing some woman sniff another yeah. brother woman's butt it's I just, there uh, it's there that would make yeah. me definitely gag and it would be funny but um <laughs> i gotta tell you i i really i don't have cable and anytime i'm on tiktok like and i see the pair i wear like i just keep rolling just keep oh, scrolling <laughs> anything it just just keeps scrolling because i know i'm gonna buy pair eyewear at some point <laughs> but not today so i just keep scrolling or else i get fomo so so <laughs> fomo <laughs> so so it might be your eyewear pair eyewear it could be maybe because yeah, you're avoiding so. it right now you're avoiding really, it right now it's super annoying because they like click them on and they keep yeah them on. yeah and yeah. I keep and I just keep scrolling. And then there's like one every five seconds, mm-hmm. probably right. because I liked it once. And now TikTok is like, you will die of <laughs> before. You know, that's true. I, I was saying or I think I searched something, I, I uh, a powder drink that my my nutritionist wanted me to get. Yeah, and, bad plan. And I came on Facebook and all of a sudden it's all over the place because I forgot the name of it. I'm like, where the hell's the name? So I got. Go on Facebook. It's everywhere. It's like everywhere now. It's crazy. It's crazy. So, so we got two Lumis. We got um, pair eyewear. Pair eyewear. Me, me. So Lumi is is an annoying commercial to me. So, but the commercial I do not like is those. um, It's a pharmaceutical commercial, and it's. John D's or John, uh, John, something with a J. Um, anyways, it's, um, it's this really geeky guy pushing a lawnmower, like flapping his arms around. And uh, see, you ever yeah. see that one, Pop yeah. Father? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I think that, um, that pharmaceutical basically it's about, um, discounts for medications. Um, yeah, uh, yeah. I've seen. I can't, yeah, you, you know what? you know what I'm talking about. He's flapping his arms around, yeah, and I, uh, I forgot the name of it. Anyways, he's dancing. Yeah. Neighbors watching him. Dancing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you can tell it's fake grass and yeah, everything. Yeah. I'm like, good lord. So that was that was what prompted this this kind of uh, this question because I'm like, if I see that if I see that again, I'm not going to be happy, right? I'm I'm going to be like Beth. I'm not going to watch TV anymore. Yep. So, anyways. <laughs> so guys, um, I just want to, you know, we, we go through all that stuff and now we normally would get into the steps, right? But we don't, we're not doing that anymore. So, um, I don't even know what to do here. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> um, so I'd like to introduce our next guest, the pod father, as you heard at the beginning of the show, everybody, Mike, um, Mike Miles, who he's known by in, in the real community, but here we know him as the pod father. Um, he he read the be- beginning of the show, and that's how we used to start every show off. I remember coming up. I remember being excited to get into the shows. Not that I'm not excited to do the shows now, but it was all brand new, and I was like like this, like afraid. And Mike would get up there and just go, "Welcome everybody to Friends of Recovery. I'm your pod father." And I'm like, "How does he do that?" And a couple times he was out of the show because we were in this elaborate studio, and it was live. It wasn't like this recorded, and then we. Then we doctor it up and then send it out to everybody. It was live. And he just got up there and just took took command of it. And I was like, this is so cool that the Podfather got to do it. And Mike and I, uh, Podfather and I are really, really good friends. Um, we talk to each other almost daily. I, I respect 
his recovery. I love our meetings together. Um, I love doing the podcast together. So this show really got me excited again to do, to sit here and talk to Mike, because I know he hasn't been on the, on the, on the podcast in a long time. We're going to find out why and, and, you know, and maybe we can have him as a reoccurring guest event uh, here and there, but um, Podfather, here you are. Welcome to the show. Yeah. <clears throat> Thanks, Ed. You know, <clears throat> pardon me. Um, almost five years ago, next month will be five years. February will be five years. Um, we started our podcast, Friends of Recovery, and it was all about recovery. And that's we have in common. You know, um, at the time I had 30 years sobriety and he had 22, I think, or 23. And, you know, we're, we're both in the recovery business. Um, I was a cop for 35 years, um, but I also was a therapist. I have been a therapist for 20 years. So it kind of overlapped. I went back to school in my forties, got my master's in social work, licensed alcohol, drug counselor and social worker. And, um, you know, I, I started my business. Um, it's called therapy services. And I also work for a friend of mine, um, who has a business called crossroads up mm-hmm. until been there three years. So, Doing the podcast, we loved it. I mean, we, we Eddie would fly up here from Jersey, <laughs> we, you know, and then we decided eh, that's a bit too much. So I was going to do a show, maybe two or three shows, and he'd come in for the fourth. But that never happened. We just kept meeting every week, um, and we stayed at the um, Studio 21. Is that what? Yeah, the- Studio 21. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Two Down guys. New Hampshire. Down New Hampshire. Dave Garoppolo. Um Great guy. Great. Mm -hmm. Jonathan, just good people. And they taught us about podcasts. Actually, Dave has about 18 to 20 podcasts out of his studio. And believe it or not, within six months, Friends of Recovery was the number one podcast. Mm -hmm. Wow. Because people really wanted. We had some great guests on, too. We had people on. um, um, We had the guy who started the TV show Intervention. Mm -hmm. uh, Wow. Yeah. Yeah, he was one of our guests. We've had comedians on. Um, we've had um, just great, great guests, um, doctors, psychologists, um, therapists. Breath specialists. <laughs> and, yeah, we had some wacky guy from England. Uh, <laughs> you know, and we really didn't get hit it off too good. But, uh, no, but, you know, I think we end up moving to a different um to a different studio in Beverly, and uh, we did it did it out of there. And it was really try. There was a lot of work involved. Sometimes we do four podcasts in one, like one four or six hour block. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and again, we're not getting paid for this. Nope. So, uh, AT and T um, did pick us up. They they, did. they liked it. Uh, the Citadel they wanted to pick us up, uh, but we already had AT and T. We met a lot of people. You know, people from all over the country um, that would that would uh, you know chime in after after the podcast. Mm-hmm. Uh, so about a year ago, I guess um, I've been writing a book off and on for quite a while, and um, it's all about recovery. It's about policing. It's a little bit historical. It's got some right now. Currently, it has some po- political stuff in it. Um, it's really a, a hodgepodge of of things, and I'm kind of glad I waited till. I'm at where I'm at now, my, my age, you know, I'm 68 years old because I've learned so much in the last several years, you know, um, and I've looked at life differently in the last several years. So I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a, um, I hope it's a, it's a good seller, but if it touches one person, I'll be happy. And I think it'll touch many more than one, but um, it's a lot of work. I have to do a lot of research, a lot of fact finding, um, especially with historical quotes and, you know, um, you got to have the right dates and location. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't want anyone reading something and and not having it be spot on. So I've been a lot of that, a lot of fact finding. Um, I've really enjoyed it. It's given me, um, I'm in my room here. This is where I work out of. Um, I still work as a therapist. I also work in my own office um, two days a week and I work in, Salem, New Hampshire, two and a half to three days a week, mm-hmm. uh, part time. So it, it's it's good. I, I'm in the field. Step yep. meeting. I've been running a step meeting for almost three years. Um, Twenty eight months actually. It's not three years, but I've only missed one. 
You know, I love my Tuesday night stuff. Ed has come, Ed sponsored. Yeah. Ed, Ed has been the um, keynote speaker several times uh, at Crossroads. Mm-hmm. I run a meeting on Saturday mornings, which again, you know, I, I love it. Um, yeah. I've been doing that for over, <clears throat> over two and a half years too. Yeah. I stay close to the recovery field. Um, Lowell's a big city, but it's a small city. I still help a lot of people, um, you know, friend of a friend, mm-hmm. friend of this one or that one. Um, nothing satisfies me more than seeing somebody get recovery, mm-hmm. even if for 30, 90 days. Yeah. After 90 days, you know, um, if you can do it for 90 days, you can do it one day at a time the rest of yeah. your life. Yeah. I, I one, just, one, Mike, one thing I want to. We yep, touch on here. I want to. I want to. I want to just because um, I know you're not going to do this, ladies and everybody in the in the audience listening. Mike never toots his own horn, right? Never. I mean, you heard some of the accolades he's doing and what he's doing to help everybody. I heard stories like you wouldn't believe. You know, sitting in the podcast studios, having a cigar, just getting together of the things, and I'm not going to mention them that he did for people why he was a cop after he was a cop money. He handed out presents. He handed out from his own pocket. Right. That was just for the community. Right. Um, Mike was a, like you said, he was a, 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 he was a police officer all those years ago. There's no more. Um, and, and we also did a show called answering the call, the first responders podcast. So my Potiphar and I were doing two podcasts every week for, I don't know, almost two years. We were doing that. Um, well, but he he would you know the stories we would hear from him and 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 everything you know um, we would we would talk about community policing that doesn't happen really much more you know the police are just kind of dodging bullets themselves let alone getting into what what you used to do Mike um, I, I want to know <clears throat> how uh, we we if you listen to some shows back you'll understand some of Mike's story I'm, i don't want you to i don't want him to go into the story because we don't have enough of that time but there are you know early early shows but mike how did policing how did this podcast um how did um you know the the way you are today either affect or or or, or help your sobriety like everything you do right you have to be proud of the stuff you do and that has to help i mean personally in in sobriety and your self-esteem and all that i mean you know you do a lot of good stuff mike yeah well thanks Ed. you know um being a cop um in a city like lowell very diverse city um very very diverse grow up in the city um taught me a lot about people different nationalities you know different different ethnic backgrounds um and, and it, it was like a learning every night, something different, you know, but I got sober a little over five years into my career. I was 32 when I got sober and, um, you know, I've, I've had consistent sobriety for the last 36 years. And I feel very blessed to be saying that I, by no means am I bragging. And we only have one day at a time. We all mm-hmm. got to, but being recovering and then serving the public also helped immensely because um, I looked at people differently. I knew this was a disease, some behaviors, bad behavior um, that caused people to go to jail, Mm -hmm. uh, direct result of being an addict or being Mm -hmm. an alcoholic. Yeah. And um, yeah, so I I think that's helped. I've had in my office in Chelmsford, I've had professional athletes to people who live under bridges. Mm -hmm. I've made as much as I've made good money and then I've done a lot for nothing, you know, because Mm -hmm. I just feel that's what I'm supposed to do. I don't feel Mm -hmm. like, you know, I I get by, I'm not super rich by no means, but I get by, we get, but I I just think helping uh, is, is I have this gift of sobriety. You guys said you just finished the 12th step, carry the message. That's what it's about. I'm a real firm believer in old AA. I really am. Um, Yeah. do the prayers every morning, prayers every night, and I really do. This yeah. yeah, Mike, I want to I want to flip the script a little bit here, and I want to talk about the the blue, the the uniform, the the camaraderie, the uh, recovery within the community of the first responders and the for the police force. Um, Beth actually had a really good question. Beth, you want to ask Podfather about that? Sure. First of all, thanks for your service um, hey, because I, I, I couldn't do that, um, but. <laughs> 
Sure you could. <laughs> so I um I so respect police officers and I actually work really, really closely with quite a few police departments in my area. Um, and one of the things I ask every single police officer that I come across is there's a lot of police officers that have substance issues. How can we in the treatment field as members of 12 step programs like better help? Now, I know there's bottles and badges and I'm totally respectful of that. And that's like you guys and you guys only. And I'm totally great with that. But how can we as the rest of the community better serve and help people with badges find and sustain long-term recovery? Well, that's a good question. And what I really firmly believe is that police, firemen, EMS, correctional officers um, are just a mirror image of society. That's all we are. You know, we just have different types of jobs. Unfortunately, people in law enforcement are more susceptible to addiction, to divorce, to suicide. They're in the top three out of two of them and then the top two out of three of, of all three of them. So it's important to know that your neighbor who happens to be a state police officer or whatever um, might be driving a shiny vehicle with stars on it and he wears a uniform or she wears a uniform, but they're just a regular person and they're just as susceptible, if not more. You know, you go to a bad accident, three people are killed. You go to a fire, a little baby died from smoke inhalation. Five people died from a fire. I mean, these are things I've encountered. Um, hangings, suicide, mm -hmm. whatever. My point is, those things stay in your mind. Post-traumatic stress, they will be there. They don't go away. You know, some of them will affect you more. Do they prevent you from continuing your life? Absolutely not, but they make you look at life differently, and they can cause a lot of damage. You know, hence alcohol abuse, drug abuse. But society in general, I don't think there'll be a, there'd be enough Beth, super Beths out there. Um, most people look at, especially nowadays, because of the political situation that's happened several administrations ago, um, going back to Ferguson, Missouri, Michael Brown, <clears throat> people dislike police officers. They, they've been assassinated. They've been set upon. They've been abused. I mean, because of the political atmosphere. Mm. And so I don't think a lot of people out there have the same mindset as you, but cops or firemen or, or <clears throat> officers that I see that come see me, you know, um, they're, they're grateful to have a, a place to go. What I try to tell them is, listen, these badge meetings, they're great. They really are. But don't be afraid to go into the real world, a regular. Mm. Mm. You're part of society too. You cannot hide from that. And you know what? I was afraid to talk about my career when I first went into AA. And I didn't miss a meeting for seven years. And I say that I'm not lying. That those are my wife had testified. This is true. I went to meetings everywhere. We're on vacation. I was going to meetings because I really wanted to stay sober. And the people in society helped me. It wasn't so much the cops. Because when I started this in 86, there wasn't a lot. There was a guy named in Boston Police Department, and he had a meeting in Mattapan, which is a part of Boston, and I went to a few of those. But the real meetings that saved me were the Monday night, the Tuesday night, the Wednesday night, with people from all walks of society shaking my hand, hugging me, kissing me, telling me, hang in there, you know? So I think it, it'd be nice if there was more people more concerned with concern out there like yourself, but I think most cops and firemen are, are correctional officers. Anybody in EMS, it's all right to have those private <clears throat> meetings but go into the real world too you'll mm. get much if not more yeah. and be proud you know be proud of the fact that you're doing something about you yeah. so <clears throat> which brings me to my next question which is maybe getting off into a political but yeah. maybe not it's really more about recovery so we all know how our culture responded to military in the 60s and the issues that it caused for veterans do you feel that the the first responders today are dealing with that same level of trauma from the people that they're trying to help? Um, what a question. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Uh, just that I also wanted to just share and see. It's kind of a two sided question. Um, also, I'm uh, friends with a gentleman who's active military and also a clinician and a professor. And he does all this other stuff. Yeah. 
And he once said to me, he said, um, the hardest part about working with this population, meaning first responders, veterans, police, all of it, was that um, anybody that experiences two major traumas that are that are the same or so similar can never go back into that situation and be able to not be re-traumatized. Do you believe that? Yep, I do. But I also think there are levels of being traumatized. I can have a recollection of a little baby that was carried by me by a firefighter at a house fire with a little baby was emitting smoke out of its little mm. nose mouth. And I can see it and almost smell it right now. I can smell the ashes and everything. And that has stayed with me. Um, a young couple, my, my second year on, on the job, committed suicide simultaneously together. Um, I can see it. I can smell it. I can feel it. Yeah. And I've been to other suicides and I've been to other fires. It didn't prevent me from doing my job. Mm. No, it's not yeah. prevent. Well, you know, we, we learned about about these um, traumas and everything. And, and we even talked about it in the show. Um, those big traumas like that are huge. And and Beth, you know, that's that's so true. I mean, you don't want to bring that trauma back up. You want to get back, back to the situation. But I think on top of it all and, and Podfather, you're the clinician here. Um, I think that um, the problem with with uh, with the big traumas or the big T's that we call them is the little T's like the little yep. bit, like the little bit, you know, Oh, you're, you're, you know, when you're growing up, Oh yeah. You know, you're, you're not going to, you're not going to mount to anything or, Oh, you know, you, you look funny in that or all Good that point. little shit. Right. Yep. I, I think not that our bodies or minds can handle those big things, but there's help out there for them. It's it's all advertised. You know, come see the pod father. He's the EAP if there was a shooting. Debriefings. Our good friend Jeff Zazel does debriefings all over the country for shootings, murders, um, even for the um uh, the 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 Sandy Hook, right? Yep. Yeah. What about those little things that drop in a bucket, drop in a bucket, drop in a bucket? You're no good, you're never gonna amount to anything. You 100%. know, go shit sh shut up, sit down, you know, all that stuff on top of all this. And I, I'm sure you experienced that, Mike. And, and Beth, that was a great question. But yeah, how was, would yeah. those two worlds combine? And, and how do you do something, especially in the first responders world? How would you handle that with another first responder? Right. Well, I think that's a great question, because if you come from a dysfunctional family um, and you were brought up in, you know, violence or uh, uh, being ridiculed, uh, you know, you, uh, that generation seems to have passed, but it's still here. You know, and I have plenty of people that have come to see me that have uh, PTS, post-traumatic stress, as a result of their upbringing, um, the way they were treated, uh, maybe, you know, beaten, maybe molested, maybe uh, just ridiculed, you know. Um, that's just as powerful as somebody that goes to a three-car, you know, fatality accident, you know. It really is because... It, depending on how old you are, uh, when it happened, how much has it been in your, you know, it stayed in your memory and in, in everything you do, you know. Um, so I, I think it's important. It, it really is to know that post-traumatic stress can happen to anybody, anytime. And if if you and, and I'll be honest, a lot of cops that I've met and I've met quite a few, um, you know, over the years um, became cops because they weren't the best kid in the blog. I, I was, I was a bad kid. I got arrested three times before I was 18. I'll think of that. I mean, you know, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but uh, in 1985, and, and I'm not bragging, I got police officer of the year. I saved a woman's life. She was being held at gunpoint. I got, I got a wall full of uh, commendations and, and, and citations in my career for helping people. So, and I didn't have the greatest lifestyle, but I had a loving family and a giving mm -hmm. family, mm -hmm. you know, and I was very fortunate. And, you know, I've been to homes on Christmas Eve where there was nothing. I mean, there mm -hmm. wasn't a tree. There wasn't a gift. There was a drunken mm -hmm. mother wanting me to drag her 16-year-old kid off to jail because uh, he was talking back to her, you know. Mm -hmm. And it, it was just, you, you, how do you deal with that? You, you, you know, you, <laughs> I want to take her off to jail, you know. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But that's a very good point. And I, I think, you know, um, if, if you can find a good therapist, good. To me, AA was my therapist. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. I got into a, an AWOL program, a way of life. I, I did a lot of step meetings. Um, I read a lot of literature. And I met some good friends in AA that I could dump anything on. And I didn't worry about it, you know. So I learned a lot 
a lot about, and I, getting my master's in social work was great, but I had a lot of knowledge before I got there about people because of AA, because of the people in AA that would stand up and say, my name is Joan, I'm an alcoholic. My two sons both hung themselves. Within the last two years, I'm 15 years sober. I'm not going to let this man drink. And then you say to yourself, how the frig is this woman doing this? You know, mm, yeah. then you get to know Joan Cullen, who's not with us anymore. I got to know her and talk to her. And what a powerful woman, mm. you know, uh, uh, it's just, uh, I don't know. AA to me was my, was my therapy, my mm. therapist. Honestly. I, think, I actually think that that's, that, I'm so, so glad that you shared that, Mike, because the reality is, is, is that, up, you know, even I think presently, I think less so here in Jersey. I'm not quite sure about up in Boston, but, you know, most most areas in this country, you'll lose a promotion or the ability to get a promotion if you mm. seek clinical care. Mm -hmm. Right. So here we have a population <laughs> that's prone to suicide, prone to depression, yeah. prone to, um, uh, you know, drinking, alcoholism, yeah, addiction, yeah. all these things. Then on top of that. We pile on trauma after trauma after trauma, and then we subject them to a culture that says, if you go get clinical help and admit mm -hmm. that you need help, right. you're right. never going to get a pay bump. Mm -hmm. That's it. I have several clients like that right now um, that if they lose their ability to carry a firearm, they mm -hmm. can't be a cop anymore, you know, and, you know, it's heartbreaking. But the bottom line is it, things are changing here in Massachusetts. Um, it's a very liberal state, too liberal for me, but I live in it, you know. But, Just go north a little bit, go north yeah. a little bit and go see Mr. Jonathan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but on the other side of the coin, um, it's good in the sense that, put it this way, in 1986, when I went and got help, in 1988, they were trying to fire him. Mm. And I went in front of a board of inquiry and the city manager of the city of Lowell was a guy that I knew pretty well. I used to drive him home from the meetings, the um, city council meetings, that is. <laughs> and so he turned it over to somebody else, another town manager in a local town to run the hearing. Well, that town manager found on my, found for me. In other words, I admitted I had an alcohol and drug problem. The chief wanted to fire me. I had gotten nice awards and I was a good cop and, but I had a problem. So the guy who had, who ran my, facilitated my hearing, his name was Ned Robinson. And Ned Robinson um, was a town manager in a, a local, you know, a town several miles away. And he found for me because the department had never offered me help. In other words, I wasn't there for a specific act. I was there because I went and got help. Yep. So that's crazy. It's yeah. insane, 19, right? Yeah, and since 1986, <laughs> now they give cops an opportunity. They don't ask. They give you one shot. If you've got a problem, go get help. Yeah. If it's yeah. alcohol, drugs, they don't care. As long as you go and get the help. Well, it's a different world than, than yeah. it was it from really when is. you were growing up. Uh, baby, is. did you have a question? I'm sorry. I do, well, I have a question, but it's um, it's a little different. I want to know when the book is coming out. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I totally want to read your book. <laughs> yeah. Wait, well, we'll get we'll get different. we'll get to that in a second, Potfather. Right. Just before we before we do that, you shared your experiences, you shared your strengths. What is your hopes for recovery? What is your hopes for the the law enforcement first responders? What's your hopes for what this world might look like a hundred years from now? Like, you know, why are why are you doing what the fuck you do? What is it going to do in the future for us? Because you're doing a lot of shit, a lot of good stuff. And how do you see that? And what's your hopes for the future? Yeah. Well, like I said, it's already changed considerably, considering that nowadays, if you have a problem, a lot of departments, low was a department of 250 at the time when I left in 2015. I was the employee assistance professional for the last eight years of my career. Mm -hmm. 28 years in a cruiser on the 4 to 12 ship, eight years with my own office helping cops and their families and firemen in other cities and towns. Joe, the hot dog Joe, uh, yeah. Jeff Zizel, you mentioned Jeff. Jeff has got to be one of the most knowledgeable um professional uh, superstars, as far as I'm concerned, with helping people that wear a uniform. Mm -hmm. um, it's changed considerably. It's a lot better. Will it continue to get better? I hope so. Mm -hmm. um, 
you know, what happened to some of these cops that were assassinated after the Ferguson, Missouri thing, which Officer Wilson was acting appropriately. The, the, the one witness who lied, who said Michael Brown had his hands up, don't shoot, hands up. It never happened. You had news people on TV with their hands up on CNN, on w, uh, MMS, MSNBC, you know, with hoodies on. I mean, ridiculous. They didn't have the true facts. See, we live in a society today where reporters don't do their job. They just go after one particular a party. That's all they do. They, they don't do research. You know, they don't care about the cops that are being killed. And believe me, I've been to Washington, D.C. several times for Police Memorial Week. Nothing sadder than to see a limousine pull up, a woman get out with three little kids because her husband's name's on the wall or their mm -hmm. father's name's on the wall, you mm -hmm. know, and cops are being killed needlessly. It's it's bad enough job as it is. Mm -hmm. But, you know, so I think we've made considerable strives yeah. in law enforcement. And I agree. I, fire departments too. Um, you know, the number one profession for heart attacks has always been cops and firemen. You know, number one for suicide yep. always been cops. Yep. You have a firearm it has a lot to do with it. But yep. yeah, I think we're making considerable progress. Is my good, my answer? Good, good. I really do. And you hey, know one what? more thing, just real yeah. quick. I'm a veteran too. I'm a Vietnam era veteran, three years, yep. seventy two to seventy five. Thank and, you. Um, yep. Thank you. And I, I got to say that even that. That's changing dramatically. I don't think it's changing for the better, but I think it's changing. But I, I think there are certain elements of um, um, forces mm -hmm. that if you need help, you'll get help. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, you know, that's that's yeah. where the uh, the whole 28 day rehab stay came from the Navy. You know that, right? No, no really. No. Yeah. No. So it, that's the arbitrary number of 28 days of treatment. So military are allowed to go away for 30 days without X, Y, or Z. I think it's explanation or something. Right. So they gave uh, Navy servicemen one day each way to travel, which left oh. them eight days of treatment. Yeah. Like wow. Okay. Never knew How crazy before. is that? I've, I've learned two things today. <laughs> <laughs> two new things. Pretty cool. Well, as far as the as far as the book, um yeah. yeah, it's 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 almost ready. I got 17 chapters. Um it's good. I think it's good. I keep going over it. I keep making changes, and uh, I got to talk to Brian Casey, and and uh, very soon. I'm hopeful. I'm hoping by um, mid April. Yeah. All right. Brian, Christmas Brian, presents next year, people. That's right. Yeah. Get those books out. We'll have them <laughs> on here. We'll we'll have you on a podcast again when you get the book out. All right. Um, I, I hate to say this, but I have to run. You do right. absolutely. So you go do your thing. We're going to close the show out here, uh, Podfather. What is the name of the book? So when it comes out, we know what to look for. Miles of Hope. Miles of Hope oh, by Mike this. by Love Mike it. Miles. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, you go do what you have to do. Ladies, um, you know, uh, great show. I mean, we're getting used to a new format here. Um, you know, it, before we were able to just kind of blurt out about the steps and all that. Now we really have to concentrate and let the um let the guest be the 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 kind of the great star of the show it. i know and i think we did a great job what do you think podfather you were well, the originator awesome. what uh, do you think how did how did this yeah, interview go yeah um B bambi uh, uh, excuse me uh, you know i never met you you sent me some excuse me some information as to how to get on the podcast and everything and uh yeah i really enjoyed this i haven't done a podcast in quite a while and, and yeah. i really enjoy it and super beth um, I can tell just by looking at you, you and, and your questions were phenomenal. Thank you so much. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, right in my, right in my warehouse. And uh, Ed, you're in the book. <laughs> <laughs> I made a book. I made a book. <laughs> you're in the book. Right, right, right. Um, All right, guys. Miles of Hope, guys, the Mike Miles, the podfather, um, the original, one of the original podcast hosts here on Friends in Recovery. Um, we love you, Mike. Thank you for changing the world a little bit mm -hmm. from your end of things. Um, I know you made a big change in my life. Um, and I I hope I hope that kind of resonates with our friends in recovery because of all the podcasts that we did. Mike, I hope to see him on future episodes. Ladies, great yep. job. And thank you, Podfather. Yeah, thank you so much. Stay You're welcome, sober, Super everybody. Beth. You're welcome, Bambi. And Ed, don't show oh. yourself shot. You you do just as much, if not more. <laughs> but Your for story. the um, re yeah, he does. And you know, I, I love I love your enthusiasm and your uh, determination to do it no matter what. You're still doing this. I know this isn't easy. It takes a lot of time. And uh, you, you have a wonderful partner, Stacy. You got a great wife there and yeah. great children. So, Absolutely. all right, guys. Thanks, Mike. I love you.
All right. I'll see you soon. Stay sober, everybody. Bye-bye. This concludes this episode of Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast. Follow us on Facebook for past shows and updates and enjoy free access to twice daily support meetings. Friends in Recovery, the Addiction Recovery Podcast is available on Facebook, Podbean, iTunes, and YouTube 24 hours a day, seven days a week.